Howdy guys, welcome to Vlogmas Day 11. I woke up around 3.30 this morning because uh, I couldn't sleep. So I edited Vlogmas Day 10 and uploaded it and then I just went back to sleep. I was feeling really sick, like really nauseous and just really lethargic and like... And I was just feeling really off. And that contraction I told you about that I had yesterday around 1.30, I had another one um, about 20 minutes ago. And it felt the exact same. I had like a wave of nausea about an hour before the contraction started. And it was just one contraction and it lasted about 30 to 40 seconds. I feel like it means something because I've never felt that pain before i know what my braxton hicks contractions feels like because i have been feeling them for quite a while since i was like in the second trimester so i know they're not braxton hicks maybe this is the start of something it is what it is we're just playing the waiting game at this point i have to run over to my office and drop something off and that's pretty much all i have planned for today it's freezing outside i think toronto's getting their first snowfall today and it's starting to flurry up a little bit but it's a short walk the distance between my house and the office building is 11 minutes 15 when you're pregnant and it's good too because i get about a half an hour walk in there which is good for me and it's good for the baby so i'm not complaining this is probably my favorite sweater it's the only one that fit literally from day one. I got it for $5 in a crazy sale at DKNY. back home. I have some ginger in the fridge and I'm thinking I'm gonna use it to make um, honey ginger like a warm cup of honey ginger. I feel like it'll really help my nasal passages and everything like that. Ooh, I might put peppermint in it too. I'm gonna cut up some ginger and do that right now and then we're gonna sit and we're gonna have a little chat. I'm gonna tell you guys about how we chose our donor. Ooh. Come out! Think about one spring bank for the whole country with only 50 plus donors. The process takes so long that it takes time for them to update their catalog with new donors. And when they do update them, you'll probably see two or three new donors. We had a game plan going in. The first thing we said was race was not a factor. The main things that we looked for was a donor who was cmv negative that was very important to us because i'm cmv negative so i didn't want to get a donor who was cmv positive we also wanted somebody who had a master's degree or higher we also were looking into their health background we wanted to make sure that there was no history of or very little history actually health issues that could be dealt with the donor that we found had a master's had a master's degree they were CMV negative and I think their health issue was um, lung cancer but it was due to smoking. It wasn't hereditary that we could see anyway. We wanted a donor that was open ID. Open ID basically means that when our child turns 18 they have the opportunity to meet their uh, donor if they wanted to so we put it all on a point system they got a point for every one of those items on our list that they checked off positively Hina really wanted somebody who was analytical like she is somebody who plays a musical instrument like she did growing up Hina played the clarinet and the cello growing up so they kind of checked off everything off of our list. When it came to race, even though it wasn't a deciding factor in how we chose our donor, first looking at donors who were South Asian, like my wife. There were a couple donors from Iran, um, there was a Tunisian guy, uh, but there weren't many. And 
all of those donors were CMV positive. Based on the advice of her doctor, we decided not to use any of those donors um, because of the risks of using a CMV positive donor on somebody who was CMV negative. South Asian donors basically were crossed off the list. I think there was one black donor on the list and he didn't meet any of the other criteria that we set for selecting our donor. South Asian donors were out of the picture. Black donors were out of the picture. You are typically going to find that most of the people who donate are of European slash Caucasian descent. So we settled on a Caucasian donor. The reason why I'm telling you this is because people have their misconceptions on, you know, based on this idea that black people want to have white babies, and that is entirely not the case. We were very um, systematic about the methods that we chose to select our donor, and it just so happens that our donor was white. Race was one of the final, but not the most important deciding factor on how we chose our donor. We looked at everybody and this donor, we settled on him because he met all the criteria that we set out. He was an open ID donor, which is very important. And we found it very strange too, that the South Asian donors, none of them were open ID. They all wanted to remain anonymous. Sometimes on the profile, it'll tell you um, if the donor is proven fertile or not, and it'll tell you how many kids they have. It was actually what decided it for us this donor had uh, multiple successful pregnancies to us that spelled good sperm count I really thought it was important to uh, to mention that and let you guys know the process and if you guys are looking to get into the process of you know IUI slash IVF and selecting a donor Maybe that'll help you too. That's how we chose our donor. Look who's home! This is like officially our first real snowfall in Toronto. Uh, Hina's just getting some work done and I am watching TV, Kim's Convenience. It's a Canadian TV show, but it's like really funny. Tomorrow, I'm actually really excited for because I have my 39 week checkup i also have an ultrasound so we get to see the baby and they're gonna check his amniotic fluid levels as well as the bpp which i'm not entirely sure what that is let's do a quick google and find out oh bpp means biophysical profile it's a test to measure the health of your baby and it may also include a non-stress test with electronic fetal heart monitoring and a fetal ultrasound. So we get to see the baby, we get to see how much amniotic fluid is in there, and hopefully we'll find out if I started dilating at all. I still don't think I have, but I'm hoping something happens between tonight and tomorrow. But I'll fill you guys in tomorrow on how that goes for Vlogmas day 12. So I have to do 10 and 11. No. No. Let's do 12. No, yeah, no, we'll do it tomorrow. Here. No, you do it. You're it. gonna do it tomorrow. You can edit it. No, can you not? Why are you such a troublemaker? Tina, stop. I did it. Here. This is Alpine Punch. It's really not my fave. This is actually probably my least favorite tea. Rooibos teas aren't my favorite. I feel like they have an aftertaste that I don't really like. It's a Rooibos with coconut. Apples, cinnamon, ginger, cardamom, black pepper, rose blossoms, almonds, natural and artificial almond cream flavoring. I'm gonna call it a night for Vlogmas. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll definitely keep you updated on how my doctor's appointment goes tomorrow. And don't forget to thumbs up and leave your comments. We love reading your comments and we love responding to your comments. Fingers crossed, hopefully baby will be here soon and we can all enjoy him for Christmas. I'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>